subtitle I have here is called Committed to the Faith that Life Comes Out of Death. <clears throat> We've been talking about it. Now we need to talk about our commitment to that as the faith. We see this in Romans chapter 8, beginning with verse 35 to the end of the chapter. What shall separate us from the love of Christ or the selfless nature of God? God is love. Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? That is, as it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long notice. For thy sake we go into death. Okay. For thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. That's what, you know, that, it's not the plan that we do it. It's, our, it's the nature of Christ at work in us why we do it. Nay, and all, but he goes, no, see, even if that's true, in all of these things, we're more than conquerors through him that loved us. The same one who loved us, the same faith that justified us has now become the faith by which we live. And all these things were more than conquerors through him that loved us. Verse 38, for here, and here it is, committed to the faith that life comes out of death. For I am persuaded. I am persuaded. He's committed, people. This is a commitment of his heart to the faith. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creation shall be able to separate us from the love of Christ, the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. <clears throat> All right, so there is that persuasion, and with it that commitment that this is the faith. This is the faith of Abraham. This is the faith that justifies. This is the faith by which Jesus lived, and therefore we live, if you will. <clears throat> All right, so if these things are the true premise of faith, then the faith that God would require from us would demand that there be a commitment to the concept of life out of death. Okay? I mean, I put, it would demand that there be a commitment. To, because if this is, this is what saved us, and this is, and it saved us through the way that he carried himself in this spirit, and then he comes inside of us, and we call him our life, it demands it, or we're hypocrites. Amen? Anything short of that actually misses the point of faith in the crucifixion of Christ. Therefore, faith in these terms is not just a turning to Jesus for salvation and pardon from sins, but an, an identification with Jesus or an identification with Christ crucified. Because when we, when we use the term, theological term used is identified with Christ, identification. You, you don't identify with Jesus of Nazareth. And, that, and if you did, that doesn't justify you. You identify with Christ crucified. You are identified into his death, okay, and into his life. So therefore, faith in these terms is not just a turning to Jesus for salvation and pardon from sins, but an identification with Jesus, not just in his person as Jesus of Nazareth, but solely with the crucified capitalized, the crucified, and his cross. It is not just a change of philosophy or of doctrine with no all-out allegiance. All right, so most, many Christians, I don't know, some, some I've met, several in this room, not, I'm, I'm kidding, but, you know, have, have, have been able to say, you know, that I, you know, I believe, um, so I, I'm having a change of philosophy 
from what I used to believe, and I'm, and I'm receiving the doctrines of Christianity. And so therefore, I will, st I will stand up for these doctrines and these teachings, and I will stay a Christian, meaning I won't become a Buddhist or a Satan worshiper. And that's the, le that's the level of commitment. I'm going to stay a Christian. <laughs> I mean, folks, if you wonder why I seem to laugh more, it's just in light of these things, those things are so utterly ridiculous in light of seeing Jesus in these, in these ways. All right. <clears throat> so um, we were in Romans 8. Let's go to Galatians uh, 2. So we're familiar with Galatians 2.20, except for I'm in Ephesians 2.20. And it didn't say anything like what I was expecting it to. <laughs> All right, I'm home now. I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live, yet not I. Christ liveth in me, and the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. <clears throat> All right. So you see, Paul was, was overwhelmed with this reality of God through Christ laying down his life, God being crucified that I could live. And he saw the principle of it, or the nature of it. We call it the principle of it, but it's the, the nature of it. We call it the cross method, but it's Christ or it's God in their self-giving nature. And he saw that, and he said, you know what? I'm going to live by that, too. I am crucified with Christ. But I'm not going to live. It's going to be Christ that lives in me. And I'm, and I'm going to give myself to the faith. The life I now live in the flesh, I live by this faith. So in Galatians 2.20, Paul's faith caused him to conform to the principle of life out of death as expressed by Christ on the cross, which we just said. But he also sees in that cross that that crucifixion of himself results in being crucified to others Or crucified for others, crucified, or better said, bearing about the dying of the Lord Jesus in my mortal body. Bearing, bearing about, it's a little like, I mean, I'm just picturing Jesus coming into Jerusalem and everybody's saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, and it's the Lamb of God, but he's riding a donkey. And that donkey's us. And we're bearing about Christ crucified. You know, we're earthen vessels, but we have such a treasure. That donkey had such a treasure. You know? So um, you see this thing in relationship to, um, to the law where Paul, after seeing the faith, please try to follow the, the concepts that I'm setting forth right now. Paul, after after encountering this faith, this is the faith of Christianity. And this is, this is, but this is the faith that Jews were supposed to have and Abraham had. And, and look at Abraham and look at how he, it was in his death and in his lack and everything that he believed in Christ would come forth, the seed would come forth out of him and that God waited till he was dead and that this is actually the way God works. This is the operation of God, you know, 
And Paul really preached the faith, you know, really preached the faith. And he sees that, and then he looks at the law, and he goes, the law, the law, we could never be justified by this. Because it's not even in the same ballpark of what, what God's doing and what God wants. So, um, I'm just thinking about, let's see. Look at verse 14 of Galatians 2.20, because all this leads up to Galatians 2.20. Galatians 2.20 is Paul's, is Paul's reaction to people trying to live by the law. Now, interesting, it is, he, doesn't, he doesn't say now, you know, like in Romans, he, he says, well, you know, just live by faith, not by works. But the faith embraces death so that life may come forth. So it's not just by live by a faith that Jesus died, death, that life may come forth, but only as an action that happened 2,000 years ago with great eternal results, which is the way most people believe. He sees, he sees the cross as this is God's answer to the law. Not, not that Jesus died and, you don't, and now you're under grace and you don't have to worry about sin or you don't have to worry about because you'll be forgiven. That's what we call grace or, or what we call the faith. But what he calls it is, and that's what he's saying here, is, you know, if you're dead, you can't please God. And if you're dead in a good death where you are constantly dying that God and others for thy sake we are killed all the day long or for others if that's if we're living in that then we're living in a constant state of, of selfless giving not trying to live and earn something personally but to lose personally that's the key right there that's huge you ought to write that down <laughs> This is huge. You know, you ought to try to remember some of these things. I mean, it's, it is just, it's just phenomenally huge. It, but, but breaking out of the religious mindset that we've been taught that faith is nothing more than believing Jesus died for me so I wouldn't go to hell. And there is no reason for me to live beyond that in that same mode. In other words, I never noticed the scripture that says the just shall live by the same faith that saved you, that justified you. Then to, to hold it in such a small jar and say this is the faith, to Paul was ridiculous. He's saying, don't you realize that the faith literally has obliterated not by doctrine or a greater teaching, but by the very nature of itself not being self-centered, therefore not focusing on always trying to do the right thing and look good and be good and here. The very nature of the faith obliterates the law. And the way you get rid of the law, live by faith. <coughs> live by self, a self-giving nature that is always for God and others. All right, so he says in uh, verse 16, knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus. Okay, by the faith of Jesus. Okay, so he, what, okay. What faith is he talking about when he says living by the faith of Jesus? The one he described in the four verses down, Galatians 2.20. 
I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave me, and I live by the same thing, which is to be crucified with Christ so that he might live. Okay, so he's, he's explaining this. Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Jesus Christ. Even we have believed in Jesus that we might be justified by the faith of Christ, which then you're, you become just, and not by the works of the law, but by the works of the law shall no flesh be justified. All right. So he's saying, first of all, the basis, the basis of our faith is in Christ, in God, Christ's selfless giving for the undeserved. And he died as if he deserved it when he deserved none of it. Okay, so that's, that's the, the faith, that's the beginning of faith, that's the initial faith. Remember last class we talked about, initial faith. But he's going to end up with the, living by this same faith, Galatians 2.20. This is verse 16, Galatians 2.20. He takes it where it's supposed to go. He doesn't leave it there. He takes us from a work by the nature of Christ 2,000 years ago to Christ living in us now and that the way that he lives in us is that we die so that he can live. We live by the same faith that justified us, but now we live this for, for his sake, for Christ's sake in the gospel, because this is the gospel. All right. So verse 17, but if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we ourselves are also found as sinners, is it therefore Christ the minister of sin? Meaning, if we are, if we seeking to be justified by that nature that gave, and we're found living after the law, because that is the contrast of this chapter, it is. If we're found living after the law, and by it breakers of the law, then we're out of whack with this whole thing because we're supposed to be living a completely different method, cross method, as opposed to self-centered, do the law for your own righteousness, do everything right so that you'll look good to God and you'll please God, I'll please God by living. And he's saying, you need to please God by dying. Okay. And that's why it says, uh, if while we seek to be justified by Christ, we are also found sinners, is therefore Christ the minister of sin? God forbid. He's, that's what the law does. The law points out sin. The cross obliterates the person who's trying to please God because they're too self-centered and self-focused. They got too much everything but Christ. So what is it gonna, what's it gonna take? Galatians 2.20, all right, so. For if I build again the things which I destroyed, I make myself a transgressor, meaning if I go back under the law, then guess what? I'm guilty to do the whole law. Okay, you gotta be perfect, and you're not perfect. But here's the funny thing, in God's mind, perfection is you unable to do it. Like Abraham, I'm, I'm dead. My, mine and Sarah's womb is dead. I'm dead, and we're unable to do this thing. So I believe that you're going to bring forth your son because life comes out of death. Faith of Abraham. Okay? So... So, like Romans 4, 3 and 4, and, you know, wherein does the law have anything to boast? It has nothing. It has nothing. Because it only promotes more self-centeredness and sin and, and stirs up your pride. You know, well, I, you know, I mean, to, to be better and to look better. I'm telling you, folks, I'm telling you that the faith literally chops down the tree of the law and because the tree of the law is based on us being good 
and at our best, which we want to do. We want to be good and we want to be at our best and we want everybody to think we're something and we want to be special and we want to die, all of this stuff. The faith says die. Stop it. In the madness. It's time to die and stop giving yourself to me in any other way except through Christ crucified. Why? I won't accept it because it's not Christ, first of all, but it's not my acceptable cross method, which is the nature of Christ at work in us. Bless you. For I threw the law and dead, dead to the law that I might live unto God. Okay, so through the law, through the... Because remember now, he's quoting all kinds of scriptures here from what's called the law, the Old Testament, Moses. But through the law, he saw Christ. And he saw the cross. Now remember, Paul wrote most of this stuff. He never stood at the actual foot of the cross. Was he alive at that time? Yes. Was he probably in Jerusalem? I'm, I'm totally convinced that he was there. He was a Pharisee of the Pharisees. He was being raised up under Gamaliel, and Gamaliel knew about it because the, all the guys came to him and asked him, well, what should we do in this situation? You know, Paul was around, but God didn't let him in on any of this stuff outwardly because he was going to teach it, the real truth of it. The spirit of truth was going to come to Paul and begin to open the law because they didn't, they didn't have a New Testament. Paul's busy writing it. <laughs> and so he was going to open to him the law, that through the law, he would see what? What would he see? Now, that, that's, this is key. You know, what's he going to see? For through the law, for I, through the law, am dead to the law that I might live unto God. So what's he going to see in the law that's going to make him dead to the law and live unto God? Verse 20, I am crucified with Christ, nevertheless I live. John was there at the cross, and John looked up at Jesus died, and he didn't go, whoa, whoa, look at, oh my God, look at that. I'm dead with him. He didn't see it. Nobody saw it. So Paul was, he, you know, he probably later on, you know, in his early going first, first three weeks of salvation said something like, dang, I was, I was right here. I heard, I heard he was out on the side preaching and stuff on the hill over there. I never went to listen. I, you know, then I heard they were crucifying. I go, look, I've got some studies I need to finish up because I'm out distancing all my brethren. <laughs> you know, which sounds like him in, in Philippians 3. Read it. Read it. Philippians 3. It's just like what he was before he saw this. But then when he saw this, he's going, oh, my God. Oh, my God. This is the cross. This is the truth. This is what happened. And it wasn't, and he doesn't, he doesn't say the answer to the law is that, because this is dealing with the law, right? Or, and everything we've just read. He doesn't say the answer to the law is that Jesus died and he, buried, <clears throat> he bore the penalty so I don't have to be punished for the law. <clears throat> Why didn't he say that? We say that. <laughs> That's our answer to the law. Well, I don't, so I don't, I'm not under the law. <laughs> you know, there's a spirit in that that is so, again, just the opposite of Christ crucified. You know, so I'm not, so I'm not under the law, you know. <clears throat> well, you never were, by the way, unless you're a Jew, you know. <laughs> you know. But you put yourself under there, you're responsible to keep the whole thing, okay. <clears throat> and most Gentiles do. Anyway. So he didn't get off on all of the stuff that we get off on. He didn't, he didn't get all wrapped up in the mechanics of it. Paul says the law works this way. The law worketh wrath. The law shows us our sin. The law, you know, we think by it we're going to be righteous. And we go about to establish our own righteousness. And he says, but the, the faith is that I need to die and I need to do it in this spirit of faith that Christ may live. And my claim to fame will be Christ crucified living in me and on the cross 
you know. But it's the same to him. See, he, he doesn't separate what happened 2,000 years ago from right now, the life I now live in the flesh. He doesn't separate, because why? Because it's an... Okay, Charles, what did I do with it? Woo! Okay, so uh, let's put 2,000 years ago... There, that's, this is Calvary. All right. But see, he's looking back on that. But here's Paul as he lives right now. And when he looks back here, here's, here's Paul as he's right now living the life I now. So let's put it now. The life I now live in the flesh, not someday or whatever. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave me. So he looks back to the cross. He looks there and he sees this spirit of self-giving and it was done in a, in a realm of what was called faith to him. That's the way he's viewing this thing with God. That this is God's faith. This is Jesus' faith. He lives by this faith. By the faith of the Son of God, who loves by giving himself. Okay? So he sees that, and he sees that, what does he see also? He sees that I died there, but I received his life, and that life is in me now. So he sees no difference because what, is, what was done here at Calvary was an eternal release of God love, selfless love. Eternal release. And what he sees being released inside of him is the same thing. It's the same thing. And it's eternal, so it's not, nothing's an event anymore. So you say, well, I'm going to go on the mission trip. I'm going to go on a short-term mission trip. And I'm going to be, I'm going to be good. You know, I'm, well, I'm going to give myself, you know, I'm going to give myself to God for, you know, two weeks. Usually short-term mission trips are, you know, I've, I've been on a bunch of them with other people and stuff. And, you know, I mean, first of all, there were no short-term mission trips in the Bible. Just, just so you know. You know, Paul didn't go, hey, Silas, how about two weeks of, <laughs> let's, let's go down to, you know. Costa Rica and <laughs> give ourselves for two weeks, you know, and really lay down our life, <clears throat> or Ireland for that matter. <laughs> that's not, that's it. See, that's our spirit. That's our idea. I think I can hold on for two weeks. But when I get back, I'm going to be like, I'm going to be like a person that had a girdle on for two weeks, and when I take that sucker off, the blubber's going to fly, baby. <laughs> the flesh is coming out. <clears throat> so, I, you know, I've, I'm just not, I've got, what, two, two sentences I've read so far. All right. But it's important to see this stuff. This is, this, he, what he's living now is what he saw there, and he's living it now. And for him, it never ended or it never, this, he saw what happened at Calvary not as an event, but the, the explosion of the eternal God nature. And he goes, I'm born again of that. That's what I'm born of. I'm a new creature altogether. I'm a new creation altogether. I'm not what I was. Well, what are you? I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live yet. Not I, but Christ liveth in me. And he lives in me because I saw him doing the same thing for me. And it was his faith. And this is the faith I live in the flesh. All right. So it's important that, that this be... You know, I mean, for Paul, let's put it this way. For Paul, it was an explosion of eternal reality. Is it that for us? That's right. You know? Or is it, I've heard this taught and I believe this. The faith. I live by the faith of the Son of God. This reality. 
Faith lays hold of the cross of our own crucifixion and turns away from any kind of justification that does not require a cross for us. Faith, faith lays hold of the cross. See, because that the, the cross is the faith. But you have to make it personal. So you live by that yes. spirit. And you have faith that life will come out of death if it's Jesus' death, if it's Jesus' death in me, if it's just me trying to be Christ-like or it's just me trying to be spiritual or me trying to, you know, oh, I just want to flow with the, the spirit of this place. It ain't the spirit of this place. God, the spirit of this place is horrible. No offense. But, <laughs> but the spirit of Christ, the spirit of Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Okay. All right. So, how did that read? Faith lays hold of the cross. Okay, so he laid his faith initially. Let's do it. I'm, this is Paul. I'm Paul then. This was initially he laid hold of that cross and the faith based on Jesus died for someone who didn't deserve it. But look at all the life that came out of it. Does that make sense? But look at all the life that came out of it. So he goes, this, I think I've seen the eternal God here. I think I've seen the eternal God here. So he takes it, and he's, he lays hold, his faith lays hold of the cross, but now he's not just saying the cross to justify me, but he's laying hold of the cross of his own crucifixion. Yes. Yes. And out of this is going to spring the other part, okay? So... Um, faith lays hold of the cross of our own crucifixion and it turns away any kind of justification that does not require a cross for us. That's it. It has to require a cross for us or it's not the true faith. Did anybody see that? If it's not, if it, there's not a cross involved for us, I don't, you talk about faith all you want. I, and we're talking about the faith, okay? We're not talking about the gift of faith or something like that. We're talking about the faith. The faith is based on the selfless giving of God. All right. So, so any kind of thing that would justify me that didn't require a cross is wrong. Now, now, we, we talk about justification by faith and stuff like that, but we justify ourselves all the time, amen? We do. We justify ourselves all the time. We justify ourselves to look right. Is that not the law? Yes. I mean, that's the law. Because, okay, well, you know, I, I'm, I'm looking bad in this situation. No, I need, to just, I need to just explain to you. You're justifying yourself by the law instead of by the cross. Right. The best way to justify yourself is to say, you know, Lord, if you want me to say something, I will. But the cross way is he, I opened not my mouth. He didn't, and I'm not going to. And I'm going to believe that something greater could come out of this than just me justifying myself and them going, oh, I'm sorry, I said bad things about you. You're right, you're sweet, and you know, all that kind of junk. But instead, you know, instead, I'm not going to justify myself. And, you know, I've seen it happen over and over where someone will lay down their life and the Lord will bring somebody else along and justify them. Well, that's like God. That's how God operates. Right? That's how he operates. He'll, somebody else will come along and do that. But we go, well, but I, you know, this is a really important God thing. <laughs> and I, so, you know, I need to say something to you, you know, so that we'll all be on the same page. You know, do you have any clue what's lurking in between all of that, you know, all kind of junk lurking in that? It's like, Look, if it's of God, God's big enough to take care of it. He can handle, he can handle his business. It's like, I need to help God. You know, yeah, God needs my muscle, you know.
God needs our death. Not just the death of the old man. He needs Christ. He needs us bearing about in our body the dying of the Lord Jesus. And that will release life. That will release more than all of the little petty, penny any things that we're always trying to, you know, and, and our, you know, and in the deep sincerity of our heart, we're doing it for Jesus. We're, I mean, yes, yes, I believe that full hilt. I believe that we're doing it in the sincerity of our heart. We're doing it for Jesus. But here's all, what I also believe. I believe that if we knew, if we had the faith of Abraham, if we live by the faith of the Son of God, then we would um, know that our sincerity is is steering us away from the cross, and that our, and that the depth of the cross is not in us. Because we would know without a doubt, if I just laid down my life and trusted the Lord, he could bring forth more. But no, I've got to stretch forth my hand and, and you know, touch the whatever, Ark of the Covenant or, 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 the, or the altar of incense or whatever, and then become leprous. You go, why did I, why did I become leprous? I was touching this this stuff you know I'm trying to get to God well you did in your flesh and and you say well why would God be so mean to make me a leper by when I was just I wasn't out in the bar I was trying to touch something holy and he'd say he didn't he wasn't being mean he just exposed what you are you're a leper your flesh stinks it's rotten and and uh, you need to see that that's what you are when you touch the things of God without, be, without the, how did I word that? Uh, any kind of justification that, that does not require a cross for us is to be rejected. This didn't require a cross for you. This rejected the cross and said, I can't trust the Lord to do this or to protect me or to bring forth life, so I'm going to put forth my hand. And then he says, well, then... You know, you're going, to see, you're going to be seen for what you are by everybody. You've been working so hard to cover up. I'm a king. I got it. You remember one of, that was one of the kings. I'm a king. I, I should be able to do whatever I want. <laughs> you know? And, and not, you know, anybody ever heard of the fear of God as the beginning of knowledge? <laughs> God help us. Anyway. I don't even know where I am anymore on this. Okay, here we go. <clears throat> um, so this becomes a matter of allegiance. And I'm, I'm, I'm making that point because I felt like the Holy Spirit gave it to me and wanted me to. The, there, there has to become an allegiance to this faith. If for no other reason, then it's what we believe and, are just, uh, and, are, and we're justified by it. But... It's greater than that. The, our allegiance says, if that's true of Jesus and that's the faith that he lived by and that's how he did it, then, and he did it for me, guess what? He ain't getting away with this. I'm going to lay down my life so that he can live in me. I'm, in other words, I have an allegiance to this for Christ's sake. And it says, it's no longer about me. My role is to die daily and to do it in such a manner that no one will even know it and then maybe Christ will be coming forth in me and people will be affected and you know and I won't get any glory because they'll go oh my god that was Jesus I you know Jesus did something through you or you know even many times they don't even recognize the source or, or the source vessel so we're not, we're not keeping re record. Love does not keep a record of wrongs. It doesn't keep a record of what we've done. Amen. 
So this becomes a matter of allegiance. The way of the cross is where your allegiance must lie. Do you all agree with that? The way of the cross is where your allegiance must lie. For that to be the case, there must come a renunciation of other allegiances. In light of realizing that God's method of operation is in bringing life out of death, then faith renounces the law method by obtaining, uh, the law method by obtaining justification. Somewhere right here is where I wrote that sentence. It does, yeah, here, it's the next sentence. Faith renounces the law method. It does so by means of functioning by death and not by words of renunciation. You don't rebuke the law. You live crucified, and that says, it, it slaps the law in the face. It just does. And if you live by the faith of the Son of God in that way, then you're dead. It just totally dismantles, disarms, and breaks down the law as a means of, of justification because you're not, you're not, you're no longer about you. All right, so we, so, you know, where we're at in this season right now and what the Lord's doing, we say, well, during this season, it's about Jesus. Well, in, yeah, that's good. In light of everything that we've just shared, the faith says it has to be about Jesus all the time, right? How could it ever reverse out of this? Where, at what point do you come, you know, and say, well, that was good. You know, I held my breath long enough, you know. And, and, I, and I got news for you. That's one good thing about the quote-unquote season that we're in right now. God's already told me it's going to be long enough that nobody can hold their breath that long. Perfect. Yes. <laughs> All right. Um, it, bo it boasts in the cross. Our faith boasts in the cross and the cross method, meaning... Thank you, Jesus, on Calvary 2,000 years ago. And thank you for this selfless, this faith that, that would cause me to be crucified with Christ and not live so that Christ may live. It glories, it boasts in the cross of our own crucifixion. But, it, but of Christ also, but of Christ's self, you know, bearing about in the body the dying of the Lord, which is... Not our own crucifixion in the sense of getting rid of our flesh. It is his crucifixion at work in us. And we're, we're going to explain that as we go down the road here. All of this is coming. But I'm really, I'm telling you folks, I'm really trying with all my heart to be before the Lord in these days and to hear from the Lord and to put things in the order that he gives regardless of what that is. And in my heart, I'm not trying to make it clear I'm not trying to make it understandable with the human mind. I'm not trying to put it in an order that will, you know, you, you could glory in because, oh, that's so clear. I'm trying to hear whatever order the Holy Spirit gives it to me and tells me to put it in because I know that if I die to my hands and my abilities and my thoughts, then what will be delivered will, will be worth something and it won't be just another class so i'm just telling you that i am i am dying daily over this and i deeply deeply want just the lord to come forth from the holy spirit So that allegiance causes us to be given over totally to death. See, there it is. Okay, so we say, I, I'm, I pledge allegiance to the cross method. Okay, yes, that's how you begin, but it must eventually be my, the, that allegiance causes us to be given over totally to death. You see the difference? One is, I pledge allegiance. The other one is, my allegiance is to be given to death so that others, so God and others, all the laws fulfilled in that, and it's not kept by that. It's fulfilled. Big difference. 
Okay, so the, that allegiance causes us to be given over totally to death, whereby we submit to it because we believe that it is the means set up by God to bring about life for others. All right. I don't know if I want to start. Uh, the next section I, I want to get into um, more specifically about the law. I want to get in, I want to show um, from the scriptures, and we're going to go back to Romans 4 for part of this. And I want to just show that um, Abraham really had it, man. He had it. He had it. And he was the father of the whole nation. And, and God said, you know, through, through Paul, I can point to the first guy that started this whole thing and the relationship he and I had, and it wasn't law. It was death to self so that the life of another would come forth, which is, see, Paul uses that example of Abraham and Isaac, right? Well, he's Abraham and Isaac in Galatians 2.20. I mean, he's... He's offering up himself that the son might come forth. The father is, is, as it were, I mean, you know, offering up his son that out of the ram thicket would come the son that would give himself. And so there's this, there's this thing that Paul, I mean, I'm telling you, see, the, Paul's view of this stuff, he, he was such a Pharisee and he was such a legalist before he... I mean, he was a Pharisee of Pharisee. He was one of the worst. He was going around killing Christians. I'm telling you, he was committed to the law, to the hill. And what kind of a thing could happen that a transformation could so transform somebody? He says right there, Galatians 2.20. That's it. I understand that he loved me and he gave himself for me. And, can, and having received that faith and that life, can I do any less for him? Can I not love him enough to lose my life that Christ may live? I am, I am crucified. He is the I am, I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, but it's not I. No longer I. Christ lives within me. It didn't, it didn't, take, it didn't take 10, 15 years to obliterate the law. It took one unveiling of the cross. Just one time the Holy Spirit goes, hey, take a look at this. And he goes, oh my God, we're doing it wrong. Even our father did it different than what we're doing, you know, and he's just, he's just dancing through the Old Testament, seeing oh, Jesus, you know. You know. Well, what about this? And what about this, you know? And, and all of it is, but all of it, see, he saw the pattern of Christ crucified, not literally at Calvary. He saw the true spirit and reality, the eternal spirit of it. And when he saw the eternal spirit of it, then he took eyes that had templates and he read the Old Testament and he went, oh my Lord. And they all did. They all did. I mean, all of the writers, uh, Peter and all of them. Uh, and, and so he's just looking through here and he goes, oh my God, here it is right here. How blind can we be? You know? So he says, blindness in part was upon us because da 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 da. You know? But then he starts talking about the faith there in chapter 11 of Romans again. Okay, uh, let me do this. I know this is probably something to y'all. I really should do these things immediately. If I don't, I'm gonna lose track of what I'm doing here. Y'all can be praying for me while I'm doing this. That wouldn't hurt me or y'all. 
Thank you, Lord. I'll tell you what, I, I pray in the Spirit constantly without any thought. I'll be doing anything, anything. And I'll be, I'll, I will be shocked at myself. I'm praying in the Spirit. I didn't even know I was praying in the Spirit. And, and I just, you know, I just, you know, I just thank the Lord. I just thank the Lord that he can saturate us enough where we tip the scales and it's more about him than us. You see that? We've got to keep going. He can saturate us enough where it tips the scale and it's more, the Spirit is more at work in us about him than it is us trying to be Christian. I don't want to be Christian. I want the true and real and living God and everything else, forget it. Amen? Amen. Amen. Father, we just love you so much. Thank you for fathering us. Thank you for fathering us by putting your seed in us. Thank you that there the seed of Christ begins to fill us up. And we begin to, Lord, just like a pregnant woman, the seed within us grows and other things that had their place begin to be moved aside, and pushed further back, and life starts taking over instead of just organs that function to keep our life going. And sometimes it becomes uncomfortable, Lord, because it's, it's pressing on different organs to our life. But it's your life within us that's taken over. More of Jesus, less of me. More of Jesus, less of me. So, Father, we just humbly, without pride or without any hope of ourselves, we humbly ask you, put that seed in us and grow it and grow it and grow it and may the revelation of the, of the life that we have become, become the vision by which we walk and live and think. As I said, Father, we have no hope in ourselves. We're like Abraham. But our hope, our faith, our faith is in you that in this death you'll bring forth the life of, of Isaac, your son, your beloved son, the son whom you love. We don't just look 2,000 years ago. We believe that same eternal spirit is here now and it's in us. Tip the scales, Father. Tip the scales. In Jesus' name. Amen.